I'm willing to bet that if you've spent very much time working with Angular animations, you've had the need or desire to disable them for one reason or another. Something that I encounter quite a bit are animations that run on component initialization. I have animations that I only expect to run when an interaction occurs or when data changes or something along those lines. I don't expect them to run on initialization, but they do anyway. Well, this is something that I'm going to show you how to fix in this video. All right, let's get to it. Now, before we get too far along, it's important to note that I've already created several videos focused on the animation framework in Angular. These videos cover many different animation topics, so if any of these concepts look unfamiliar to you, you'll probably want to check these videos out first so that you're not lost in this video. And to make them easier to find, I've created an Angular animation playlist to help. So check it out. Okay, enough of that. On to the example for this video. Here we'll be using this PetPix demo application where people share cool images of their pets. As you click to look through the images, you can see the nice transition forward as you navigate to the next image. And then when you navigate backwards with the previous button, you can see that it animates nicely in the opposite direction. So this animation is cool when navigating between the images, but there is something happening that we don't want. If we reload the application, we can see the animation runs when the component is initialized. We don't want this. Instead, we only want it to run when navigating through the images. So this is what we're going to do in this video. We're going to disable the animation until after the component fully renders, and then we'll enable it. Now, luckily for us, there's a pretty simple way to do this built right into the framework. We can use a special disabled animation control binding. When this binding is bound with the value of true, it will prevent any animations from running on the element with the binding, as well as any nested elements. So let's take a look at our code. Here in the template for the slider component, we have an animation called slide toggle bound on the div that contains all of the images. So this is where we'll add our disabled binding. But before we do, we need to add a Boolean property to bind it to. So let's switch over to the slider component TS. Next, let's add a protected property called animation disabled. And let's make it a signal with an initial value of true. OK, now we have the property. Next, we need to enable it after the component has completed its initial render. There are many ways we can do this, but for this example, we're going to use the after next render lifecycle hook. To do this, we need to add a constructor. Then within the constructor, we add the after next render function. And we'll need to be sure it gets imported properly from Angular Core. Now within the callback, if animation disabled is true, let's set it to false. OK, that should be the logic we need to properly disable and enable our animation. So let's switch back over to the template. And now we can add the disabled binding. And we can bind it to our new animation disabled signal. OK, so let's save and see how it looks. Nice, the animation no longer runs as the component is initialized. I'll reload so we can see that again. OK, now let's make sure that the animations are properly enabled by navigating through the images in the gallery. Cool, looks like they're still working correctly. So now we have a way to disable and enable Angular animations. Now there is something else you'll want to be aware of. If you're using the start and done animation event callback events for anything, they'll still run, even when the animation is disabled. It'll just run with a zero duration. To demonstrate this, let's add a start and done event to our animation. In our slider component TS, let's add a new function. Let's call it animation event. 
and then let's pass it a state that will either be start or done. Then within this function, let's simply log out the state. Okay, now let's switch over to the template. Here on the div with our animation, let's add a start event binding. Then let's call our new function. And in this case, since it's the start event, let's pass a value of start. Now let's do the same for the done event. Okay, now let's save. And I'm going to go ahead and open the example in its own window. Now let's open the dev tools and look at the console. Here we can see that both our start and done events were logged out, meaning both events ran even though our animation was disabled. Just to make this a little more clear, let's refresh and run everything again. And there you can see the start and done events have logged out again. So not a huge deal, but something to be aware of for sure. It's definitely thrown me off in the past. So now you should be able to disable animations whenever you don't want them to run. And there's lots of different ways you can do this. For example, you could add a setting to your app that allows the user to disable animations. And then you could set them to disabled using the disabled control based off the setting. Probably not something you'll need every day, but should come in handy from time to time. Now there's still plenty more to cover on Angular animations, so I'll go ahead and stop here for now, but keep an eye out for more videos in the future. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. <laughs>